guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk. And today I am going to talk about my March favorites. And firstly, like always, I'm going to start off with a book. And the book is Confess. This is a reread for me. I read this a few months ago and I filmed a review. I didn't like how it turned out because I didn't write notes as I read. I explained this in my actual review of it. But yeah, so this is a reread for me and I did kind of a quick, it was a quick read. I was like, oh, I remember what happened. Okay, next. Okay, I remember what happened. So it was that kind of thing. But I really, really enjoyed this. Next thing I'm going to talk about is something a little random and it's something I DIY'd so proudly. Um, I actually followed a video on YouTube um, and I made this little makeup bag. And I decided to use two different fabrics, and it was like a little bit more gluing because I suck at sewing things. So this is all just with glue. And so it had a little uh, zipper compartment. Let me show you. And it just holds all my gadgetsy wires and stuff, mostly like my blog camera things and stuff. But yeah, so I have raspberries on this side, and then I have little worldly maps and stuff on this side. And this was relatively cheap. I have so much leftover fabric because I want to make like a bigger version of this. But I think this is super handy to just kind of keep all of my chargers and gadgets and cords and stuff in one place. And I initially made them to be like makeup bags for when I travel to RT in Dallas, which is a book convention. Uh, it's going to be really fun. So if you have any questions, I'll answer those for you if I know them. But um, yeah. So I made them for that, kind of trying to make them early on so I have trial and error time. I really liked how these turned out, so I think I might actually make some more. Speaking of RT, I have been preparing and I want to vlog while I'm there. And I also just am bothered when I run out of like battery life on my camera when I'm filming because I only had one battery. So I caved and I went out and I bought an extra battery for my vlog camera and my main DSLR camera. Though my extra one is currently in the camera, so I can't take that one out. So I have my little vlog camera battery. They were both retailed of around $35, $30, $35, something like that. Um, and they're both by uh, DigiPower. And just ask the people at Best Buy. I got mine from there. This is my camera. Here's the battery from my camera. Get me something that works, please. And then get it. Keep your receipt in case it doesn't work because I've heard many horror stories of them not working. And so I was paranoid about that, but I had good luck with these. Just do your research. if you're gonna go out and buy one. Next thing I'm going to talk about um, is kind of shitty of me, I guess, but you can get a more expensive version from Urban Outfitters. I just happened to find mine for so, so, so much cheaper and I actually got double the amount that I would have got at Urban Outfitters. But you see these little fairy lights behind me? Well, they're these. You can't really see the copper wiring or anything. They just, they look invisible, which I love how that turned out. But um, these were $8 a piece from Urban Outfitters. They're about 21 and they each have six feet in them. So I have this going all up here and then I have it below here. But I really love these. I got them on this little shop in 19th Street. It's like a little yo yokel. <laughs> it's a little local thing. So it's not like a chain, but you can find them probably on Amazon for cheaper, but I know for sure that they do have them at Urban Outfitters. Now I'm gonna talk about Netflix favorites. This will be pretty short. I've only really done one show on Netflix and then I'm watching another one through my cable channel just like on, on demand stuff. So my first one is Supernatural. Like that's a surprise. I've been watching that for a while, but I kind of fell behind a little because I hated season eight. It was season seven or eight. Seven. I think it was seven. I hated season seven. And so I'm past that. It was the Leviathan season, whatever one that one was. But I really didn't like it. I hated the storyline, but now I'm into the next season and I'm really liking where it's going now. And then the show that I have been watching on my on demand is Girls. I love this. I'm a very big fan of Sex and the City and I heard that it was sort of like that, but really not at the same time. Just one of those, you like this, I would recommend this to you kind of thing, but it's more real and it's less um, idealized life in New York kind of thing. This is you know, life of a struggling writer and her friends, and she makes mistakes, like really bad mistakes. Uh, it focuses around Hannah, which is Lena Dunham's character. And so yeah, it's just really real. And I, it's, it's really raw and honest. And that's what I really love about it. And it's really funny. It, it takes a little bit to get used to, honestly. And it's kind of crude, but I like that. Um, so yeah, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I really enjoy it. And a show that has finally come back on that I'm super excited about is The Following. I really loved the first season. The second season kind of fell flat for me. I was still interested enough, but I it didn't have that same allure that the first season had. Now this season, I think, is closer to that first season allure, but I don't find, um, oh my god, what's his name? Kevin Bacon's character, Ryan Harding. I don't find his character interesting whatsoever. The whole girlfriend aspect in this season is just... It feels repeated and unnecessary and flat and very boring, but I mean, sometimes that's how this show is. It'll be like a really slow start and then it'll be awesome. But that being said, I do find two other characters' stories 
uh, like their storylines very interesting. Mike's, I find his hands down the most interesting because of certain things and certain guilt <laughs> things. I'm trying not to spoil here. So there's like a lot going on with him and I'm trying to figure out where he's at in his own headspace and then there's also Max and I'm trying to figure out what's going on with her headspace. I have a better idea with her but she is continuing to make poor choices and so there's a lot of it's almost more internal drama like yes there is still like the craziness that is the following but it's a lot more internalized specifically with these two characters and those are the two storylines that I find the most interesting so I am liking the show so far. I'm gonna talk about music now just because we're gonna change up the order of things and it's relatively short so I have been listening and this is weird I feel like I need to prepare people for this because I haven't really talked about this side of me, this side of me, like I'm talking about some dark secret. Um, but I listen to rock and hard rock, and not like screamo hard rock, just like uh, Shine Down, Sound of Madness, uh, Simple Man, and then I've listened to Seether. But yeah, mostly Shine Down this month. I'm listening to a lot of that, and I don't know what it is about like it transitioning into like springy months where I feel like every single year when it starts getting warm, I end up listening to like cage the elephant or something angry like that and it's just I don't know why spring feels like a cage the elephant song to me but that happens every spring slash summer I just I get into harder rock and Led Zeppelin and stuff like that I mean not Metallica hard by any means but yeah that's what I've been listening to lately weird I know considering most of the time I'm into very like indie folk who's your kind of stuff. <laughs> I want to list a couple of like makeup slash skincare slash just like beauty related type of things that I've really been enjoying this month because I've tried to try a couple, a lot of different products actually to try to find what I really like. Now this next item is going to seem really weird, but my friend Mary recommend this, recommended this to me because I'm so fair. The fairest of foundations, I've tried nearly every uh, drugstore foundation, pale shade they have, it is at least one or two shades too dark for me usually two or three. There's a couple that I found that are only like a little bit, but I don't, I don't tan, I don't know what it is, and I'm very fair, and it's so difficult for me to find a foundation that matches. So she said, try mixing in a lavender concealer or lavender foundation in with your fairest foundation to make it match. And I thought, oh, won't that make me look gray? But I'm like, I'm just gonna try it. Cause I remember seeing this lavender concealer by NYX, and this is the HD uh, photogenic concealer, and I use, shade 01 in this and I like that and it's supposed to be a highlighter shade it's my this sort of matches my skin shade but it's still a little bit too dark those are my struggles and so I went ahead and picked this up and thought what's the worst that could happen and this is can you see how it's purple it's a lot more purple in person like the lights are kind of washing it out let me put it over here where there's less light so you see it's like a very light lilac-y lavender -y purple but I mix that in with my foundation and it actually does it drops it like a shade or two and I don't look gray because what I do is I do it on the bottom half I've talked about this before to make everything match my face I just from right here down I just put a, the lightest foundation that I have mixed with this purple and then I put like a darker foundation on the rest of my face and you can't really tell because I do it at my contour line and so it just it looks it looks fine but this purple added to it, oh, it's a dream. I'm so happy. Thank you, Mary. This next item is a little bit of a splurge, depending on your definition of splurge. Me, $40 on perfume. Yeah, that's a splurge. Um, I do have a lot of perfume. I don't need more perfume, but I just, I don't know. I like it and I smell it and I lusted it after it for like a good month. And every time I went into Ulta, I was like, I want you, I want you, I want you. And so I just did it one day. Um, and this is all in French and I can't pronounce anything in French. It's going to turn off like I'm mocking or something. Um, the Eau de Michon's Cologne, um, and it is in, oh god, Botanical Cologne of the Missions Le Courier des Mihims Haute Province. I never took French, <laughs> but it's the purple packaging here. It is by, um, Provinc des Minions, Minin, Minins. You can find it at Ulta. <laughs> I can tell you that much. And it's not like a musky vanilla -y scent, it's a warm, that's the best word for it, like this really warm vanilla -y kind of, I don't know, rich scent. It's a, like a more mature vanilla. I think that's kind of the best way I'm going to get with describing of smells. Yeah. And then my last little beauty thing is a splurge, and it is the Buxom Lip Gloss in White Russian. And it's not actually white, it's this really pale milky pink. See right here 
and so it just goes on it's like just it, it enhances your natural lip color and it's also like plumping so it gives you like the tingly tingly which is my favorite thing ever like I always bought invigorating like facial scrubs or face washes or like invigorating shampoos I love the tingly feeling so I that's kind of what drew me in even more and then I heard a lot of hype from Claire Marshall who's like one of my favorite youtubers ever who's oh the queen of editing but so I caved, I bought it, and I actually really, really like it. Now we're going to talk about my favorite quote slash poetry favorites of the month. Again, I'm including this because I have a grand total of three, and I didn't really feel like it was necessary to create an entire other video for that, so we're just gonna go through these really fast. This one, I want it on my body. I, I love this. I don't know where it came from. I saw it on Tumblr really late at night, and I was just so infinitely glad that I decided to stay up for that extra 30 minutes when I knew that I should just be asleep because I may not have found this and like I want it on my body. And here's how it goes. I'm learning every day to allow the space between where I am and where I want to be to inspire me, not terrify me. And I don't, it's like a soul filling kind of thing. It's the feeling that I get after having conversations that matter with my best friend. It's the feeling that I get after going to a really amazing poetry assignment just feeling like rejuvenated. That's what that quote is to me. So I love it and am seriously considering getting that tattooed. I'm not planning on getting anything done quite soon but I've been looking for a really meaningful quote for me. We'll have to see. It'll be at least a year before I do that. And this next one is from Clementine Von Radix and I actually got to see her perform at Write About Now Poetry which was super exciting and I got to talk, chat with her and I bought her book and she said I was beautiful and I was like, oh thanks, and she said that was cool because she's like my favorite ever, I love her. Uh, so this is how the quote goes and it was actually from that night and I don't know what poem it's from, just that she said it. I think it's from her new book, I think it might be from A Mouthful of Forever, so don't quote me on that though. You don't need a college degree to be a fucking decent person. I just feel can use that in my life and I'm committed it to memory. I'm going to commit all of these to memory except maybe this last one because it's kind of long. And this is from Sierra Dunyolder during the month it took you to leave me. I am going to read the whole thing and there's one more after this so almost done. I filled my gas tank to $33.33 and told you it was for you because it was your favorite number. I organized our belongings, white t-shirts, books, toothbrushes, baby. This is where we keep our sweaters. As if using the word our would embed myself into what you call home. I bought flowers from a homeless man because you are a botany major. I wanted to bring them to you, wilting and loveless, and show you how I can nurture something worth saving. There is a five-finger scar above my breast. There is an orchestra on my neck shaped like the pulse from all the nights you held me the way you hold something slipping. There are six states pressed like stubborn flowers between the last time I kissed you and today but you still feel like a sound caught in my throat. I love that poem so much. And one last one. This one's from Tennessee Williams. I'm running away, but I prefer to call it a strategic retreat. That is it for this month's poetry and random March favorites. I sounded like a salesman going with it. So I will see you guys later next month on Forms Talk. If you have any suggestions for tags that you would like to see me do, please drop those down there in the comments and I'll be sure to check them out. So thanks guys. Bye.